Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Stebbing. Today we've got another quilting play-by-play -play for you. This time I'm going to be quilting spider webs. So if you've got a Halloween quilt that you're trying to finish up before the big day, you'll want to take a look at this video because I'm going to show you how to take some simple designs, turn it into a spider web that you could absolutely do on your quilts. It was actually, I mean, the first couple were a little rough, but once I got to my third and fourth, I was had it pretty far down and it did really well and it was really fast. I was able to do the entire twin size quilt in about an afternoon. So it really went very fast as far as free motion quilting stitches go. So the quilt that I'm working on today is our remake of Dot Dash. So the original of this is actually right here behind me. You guys have been asking about it for weeks. It is in my new book, which I just got word is shipping to me today. So by the time you guys see this, it should be at our store. So we have opened up sales for that. It is called Fat Quarter Patchwork Quilts. It is the follow-up to my last book, Fat Quarter Workshop, which was packed with a bunch of Fat Quarter friendly patterns that were originally part of our Stash with Stephanie Club and now are available exclusively in the book with two exclusives and we follow the same format here. So you can get 12 patterns for in one book. It's less than the price of two patterns, so it's a great deal. You get two exclusive patterns that have never been released anywhere else. And so just those two alone are worth the price of the book. And they're all Fat Quarter friendly and they all can be completed fairly quickly. I really enjoyed this one. It's very different than the original. The original is so um, pastel and really kind of, um, I mean, it's beautiful. It's very tranquil. We used the shell rumble fabric for it. This one we use Spookier and Sweeter from Art Gallery Fabrics, and it is so cute. It just goes to show you that when you've got a decent pattern, it really doesn't matter what you use with it as long as you are able to get that contrast. So it really showed off the Halloween fabrics really beautifully, and when we put them together, we had this secondary design of this little five patch right here, and it is so fun because it's mostly strip pieced. If you missed our video on how to piece it, make sure you go check that out. All right, so let's talk just a little bit about thread before we get into the quilting. So I started off with a really light pink and I was playing thread chicken with this. I got about halfway through and all of a sudden I like ran out of all my thread. I was like, well, shoot. And But I really liked the way it looked is it really blended very well with the light pink and then also it went well with this background which kind of has a light pink hue to it, very light, almost ivory. And, but then I ended up switching over to white and that still looked good too, because we definitely have white spider webs in the fabric, but I would have loved to have done the whole thing in the really light pink. So that just goes to show you that sometimes your neutral doesn't need to be white or gray or ivory. Sometimes a really light pink looks really good too. So, all right, so let's get in, show you guys how to do these really cool uh, spider webs, and they are not hard at all once you get the hang of it. Now, I will tell you before I did this on a quilt, I took a dry erase board and I worked it out on there because I wanted to figure out what my path was going to be. So that is definitely a tool that should be in your quilting toolbox if you like doing free motion quilting. That way you can kind of draw it out, figure the best way to work around it, the block is, and then you can do it with your needle and thread. All right, let's watch. You can see as I see on the GoPro camera and talk you through my quilting decisions and what I'm doing and why. You all should know that it was a super rainy day when I did this. So I had the bright light on full blast so you guys could see as well as possible. So I'm starting out here with just some loop-de-loops. I love to use this because it's a really easy way to work your way around the quilt when you're going in between those blocks and motifs. So I just come in one way and go out the other. All right, so we're gonna start our web i come up to a peak and then go all the way down and then i'm going to do an arc to get to the next point of the web and i'm going to go all the way across and wherever i cross that first line that's my center so now we're going to do another arc we're working clockwise around i need to cross over where those were at and then we're going to do another arc and we're going to cross again where we've been crossing all along all right, now at this point, I can do an arc to connect to my previous one. And now I need to slowly, as carefully as I can, start to stitch right over the stitches of the previous arc. And now I'm gonna keep doing those arcs to connect all my points of my spider web. 
traveling when I need to. That's why I like to use a thread like Glide because you really can stitch over it quite a bit without it um, getting too bulky and looking kind of gross the way some cotton threads can. All right, so I've made my way around. So now I'm coming in and quilting a second arc. And I am just going in here and my GoPro is slipping here. So we're gonna show you a more complete shot later. But I am just kind of going from point to point there, matching and trying to make sure that I'm coming in where those spokes were. And I know like one of my team members was really watching this and thinking, can I do this? She gets really intimidated by free motion quilting. And I was like, look, no spider makes two webs alike. So your webs don't have to be alike either. Each one can have its own flavor. All right, so we're gonna skip ahead here so that way you can see me actually doing it without the camera slipping. So, all right, so to repeat, we went all the way from top to bottom and did an arc to our next spoke. Then we're gonna cross over, creating our center. And then we're gonna arc over, we're at about three o'clock now. So we're gonna cross over to about nine o'clock. Looks like I broke a thread there. So now we're actually crossing over to about nine o'clock. We're gonna do an arc here again. We're maybe, I don't know, somewhere in the later range. We're crossing over. And now we're gonna be able to do our arc to connect to that original one. And we're gonna start traveling over those previous stitching lines to connect our arcs to our points. All right, so here we've got a travel. And for this one, it's just a, the first time doing it. Then we have, it starts off looking like a travel, but that's actually where we came into it. So now we're gonna travel here. And now we're connecting, so we're done with the outside. So I'm traveling in on that spoke a little bit and coming out. And I'm trying to come in and come in a little bit on that spoke to kind of make it look like it's looped in to that and it's all one. Now if you're not perfectly on, it really isn't the end of the world. It's a texture that people are gonna look at more than anything else. All right, so now I'm back around for that second loop and I like to do three on these. I think it looked pretty good. Um, my spider web was about 10 inches. I didn't like measure it, but I knew the size of the block and it didn't fully fill it. All right, so I'm making my way around to that center and now I'm traveling out through that spoke and I'm going to fill in now. I'm doing some loop-de-loops underneath the spider web and I'm gonna fill in anywhere where it's kind of gappy and then I'm gonna work my loop-de-loops back. And again, I just come in one way and then go out the other. So if I go clockwise for one loop, the next loop is gonna be counterclockwise. And now I'm gonna fill the space in between the spider webs. I'm coming up. I may need to come over to the left a little bit to fill in some area above that spider web, which I'm doing here. And now I'm gonna do usually two or three loops over to where I feel like I get to a point where I can then start my spider web. But at this point, I'm just kind of filling in some more, getting some space in between those spider webs. All right, so here we are. I think we're gonna start a spider web here. So I'm just coming up, looping up, and then we're just gonna do the same thing again. So I'm just gonna let you kind of watch as I work my way around. But this is the thing where I told you I kind of practiced on a whiteboard first so that I could work out how I was going to make my way around the spider web. What was the best way with the least amount of uh, traveling over threads? Because that can be a little challenging, especially when you haven't done it before or you're not using something like a ruler to keep everything perfect. And this way I was able to know kind of where I wanted to go. And still like my first couple were rough. They didn't look as good as these were. This is the second to last pass for the quilt that you're seeing here. And it, uh, you know, it took me a little bit to get it figured out on actual quilting, like on the quilt versus just doing it. And I want you to look at that top left. I wasn't perfectly on there and that's okay. You know, it's, the spider isn't perfect in nature. They're not gonna create perfect webs every time. It's okay if you're not perfectly on top of it because at the end, people are gonna see the texture and they're gonna see the spider webs in the middle of your Halloween quilt and they're gonna think it looks so cool. But I don't want you to be intimidated by this because really once you work your way out about how to actually stitch that spider web on, I encourage you to draw this as well then it really isn't hard because we're drawing some lines and we're drawing some arcs. And those are pretty simple things to do in a quilting machine once you have the hang of it. 
So, I mean, obviously if you're just starting out and you're brand new, this might be a little challenging, but if you've been quilting for a little bit, this is definitely a stitch that you could handle. I mean, I certainly was confident enough to film it the first time I did the stitch because I know that I can make straight lines. I know I can make arcs. So it's just a matter of connecting them and figuring out how to work around the quilt. All right, so we're just gonna let you watch uh, for the rest of this. And you can see as I work my way around to fill this quilt in, and it really, really is a lot of fun. I really love how this one turned out. Uh, there was a lot of uh, watching from the team as I was doing this because they wanted to see how to do it on their own quilts because it really is a fun, cute design. enjoyed today's quilting play-by-play. -play. I hope you got some ideas for what you guys can do for your own Halloween quilts that are in progress and you're trying to finish before Halloween so you can enjoy them. I hope that this made it less intimidating for you because really all we're doing is we're going to come in, we're going to come straight down, we're going to travel over, and then we're going to cross, do an arc, travel over passing through that center, and then an arc, and then from that point, you're able to go ahead and work your way around until you made it all the way. And then you can come in and come in a little further. So it really is not hard. You're drawing some lines, you're drawing some arcs, and then we're gonna connect them with some loop-de-loops because it's really easy to travel around the quilt in them. It is really fun, it's really easy. Try it out on a whiteboard first or even just pencil and paper, that's fine too. Your goal is to not pick up your pen as you're working on it because you 
obviously can't pick up your needle if you want it to be free motion all over quilting. So check it out. I think you will really enjoy the stitch. I think it's a lot of fun and I want to see your Halloween projects. Uh, we have some boo mug rugs that you guys can get still. Uh, those, the pattern is free. We have some kits available for you. We have this version of dot dash, which is the one of the exclusive patterns in my new book, Back Quarter Patchwork Quilts, which you can now get signed copies from from us. So just click on the link and you can get a signed copy from me. And then also, uh, we have some other fall quilts for you as well. We did a new one in Maple Leaf Log Cabin. We've done a lot of these out so you guys can get in the festive fall season, get your pumpkin spice latte on, and really just have some fun uh, getting all decorated for fall. All right, so check out all the things over on our website at shop.quiltandexanonymous.com. You can uh, sign up for emails there and get 10% off your first purchase, including on brand new stuff like this kit. And then you'll be the first to know when we have new goodies in store. So check that out. And until next time, happy quilting.